Yo, what's up mates? Here's the small addendum about client render flags I was talking about in the showcase video of my hacking and machinima tool. To clear up any potential confusion, some places and people refer to those flags simply as enables. Both terms will be used interchangeably here. Another important note is that during Valve's lifetime the meaning behind each bit has changed quite a lot. Some features just moved their position, while others either got introduced or removed completely. Okay, so let's look at the definition for 335A now. Residing at this address is a 4-byte value whose bits convey a single flag each. This means a total of 32 flags are available, but not all of them have been either used by Blizzard or understood yet. At the moment that's 12 unknown. Please keep in mind that those flags are only used to decide how the client draws the scene. Collisions will still be present, even if the objects aren't visible. Since it's a lot easier to explain certain flags with the help of others, I will have to jump between positions quite a lot. The M2 render flag gives you the option to show or hide M2 objects. As far as you can tell, this only affects those spawned by the client. Objects spawned by the server, like players, mobs, Wars and herbs, for example, are unaffected by the setting. M2 fade is pretty inconspicuous and controls if M2 objects either slowly fade out of existence by distance or if they just straight up pop. With the wireframe enable, you can choose between rendering the world with textures as usual or draw it as mesh only. Since it gives you the power to see through objects, it's a great way to notice some hidden details when exploring the world. Mountains, or Horizon as some other applications call it, is responsible for drawing a low-poly, untextured version of the area in the far distance. This is done to give the player the feeling of a vast world while still keeping performance in check. To give you a better visual of the trick, I disabled fog. Note the sudden change in geometry at the border. The ring is pretty self-explanatory, I can't really add anything of value here. To increase performance, a technique which is called terrain culling is enabled by default. It's a common trick in game development to boost performance by removing geometry of terrain from the rendering pipeline, which can be seen anyway. Because of obvious reasons, a change isn't visible under normal circumstances. I show it off by switching to wireframe rendering. Small objects like stones or grass on the terrain can be controlled with the ground clutter flag. They are also known by the name of detail do that. With the collision enable, you can determine if the client should color terrain and other objects according to collision with game objects. So far, I wasn't really able to 100% pinpoint what the red and green color convey exactly. Other sources call this flag by the name of show query. Now we reach the first flag where a relock is necessary after changing its value. Render object shadow controls the shadow of all server-side game objects. This means players and mobs, as well as ores and herbs. Keep in mind that this flag only controls the shadow drawn onto the terrain. Shadow on game objects itself is exempt from the setting. M2 slash WMO shadow is tied to render object shadow, and it has some quite funky behavior. What I learned about it so far is that it only is interpreted when the render object shadow flag is set to false when logging in. If you are in the old world or in the outlands, you can change the value and it instantly takes effect if you had the flag set to true when logging in. Otherwise shadows will only be rehandled if objects load in. And just like the previous flag, this one only affects the shadows drawn on the terrain. The WMO flag is the counterpart to the M2 one and controls models of its respective format. WMO lighting determines if lighting for WMOs is processed. Not much to add here. You can enable or disable texturizing WMOs by render flag. This might only affect parts of it though, like the interior. Another performance trick like terrain culling are WMO portals. They are in essence 2D planes which determine if geometry needs to be rendered by checking if rays cast through them reach a target. As you can see here, parts of the geometry is culled because it doesn't align with the portals. Occluders are like WMO portals, but in reverse. Instead of checking if a ray reaches its target, it culls geometry which is behind the 2D plane. Celeron makes extensive use of it. 
with the footprint flag, the client controls if they are projected onto snow or sand. The liquid surface controls drawing the surface of any liquid, be it water, magma, slime or otherwise. The liquid particles flag is responsible for drawing stuff suspended in fluids. Those particles are drawn as soon as the camera gets below the surface. Specular lighting is the only render flag which is actually a setting inside the game as well. After changing the value, you need to relog. If normals is checked, the game renders small yellow lines at all vertices. That's it for the explanation. If you have further questions or corrections, just let me know in the comments. See ya!